Hello, and welcome to People Keep Dying, the podcast where we talk about how people keep dying. I'm your host, Stephanie. And I'm Angela. And today, uh, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of a quick episode today. Yeah, because I got to make food. Angela has to make food for her <laughs> Korean drama club. Yeah. Tonight, that she's our potluck, her Korean drama club potluck. Where I make all the food. That she's hosting tonight. But Stephanie brought the dessert, so. Yeah, I made a, Helpful. I made an Oreo cheesecake yeah. cream pie for Nick. a Korean, <laughs> for a Korean pie. Well, I mean, if you want to cut up fruit, I guess, or uh, red bean porridge, which is no, not most no. people's things. No. Uh, so, yeah. So, super quick. Watch it's this not be super like, quick. It's going to be like, be like a four-hour yeah. long episode. <laughs> like, what, what's um, going on? But probably not. So, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about William Chandler Shrubsall. William Shrubsall was born 1971 to Marion Shrubsall, uh, and they grew up in Niagara Falls, or he grew up in Niagara Falls, New York. Ooh. And Marianne, uh, by William's account, was that she was an overbearing, strict, extremely abusive uh, mother who, like, pushed him really hard to do really well in school. It was very, very strict. He had to excel. Um, he had a he tiger also, mom. Yeah, he had yeah. a tiger mom, yeah. which I'm I didn't used. really, yeah, yeah, you're probably used to. I am i didn't have one. I just knew a lot of people yeah. who did. So he did really well in school, uh, participated in after school programs, what, extracurricular activities. Yeah. That's the word. Um, and he was, uh, lined up to be valedictorian, yeah. uh, for his high school graduation. And as he, he, because he was getting older and he was a young man, uh, he had a girlfriend that his mother didn't like that he had a girlfriend. Well, yeah. Period. Didn't like that he was distracting from his yeah, schoolwork. Distracting from his mm-hmm. schoolwork. Also because graduation was right around the corner. Yep. Uh, he was going to be leaving to head off to college. Um, and he was going to be leaving to move in with his girlfriend. And mm-hmm. that was causing mm-hmm. some strife as well. And so on June 24th, 1988, the day that William is supposed to graduate high school, um, they get into a fight because Marion, uh, sorry, uh, William was out at a party with his girlfriend. She, they got home a little bit too late. The mom was very, very upset about that. It's very like it's a Carrie's school night. mom, like Carrie White's mom type deal where like they get home too late and she like loses her lid. Yeah. And she's screaming at William. Yeah. And uh, they fighting for hours. Uh, over the course of the night, Marianne like threatens him, says that she's going to kill him, mm-hmm. that he's nothing without her, that he'll never achieve anything in his life, and and all this different stuff. And um, this is a normal night. And yeah. <laughs> 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 the guilt really works. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so something happens. William snaps. He grabs a baseball bat Ugh. and he hits his mom over the head. Uh, and then continues to hit her for over 20 times. Oh, I thought you were going to say 20 minutes, and I'm no. like, oh, that's... 20 is overkill. I mean, it could have been over 20 minutes. It was just over 20 times. It 20 was, times it was, is yeah. overkill. It was, it was heated. It was a very yeah. heated argument. Um, from his account, she was she threatened his life, mm-hmm. and but, I mean, you bashed her face in yeah. 20 times. So, like... Did she have a weapon on her? No. So she yeah. wasn't really threatening. No. Him. Well, she could have been, but yeah. like not yes. So not, yeah. uh, he pleads guilty to first degree manslaughter and receives a five to 15 year sentence in prison. However, William appeals that sentence on the fact that he's a good kid mm-hmm. and that he was young and that he had a really bright future and the circumstances oh, and everything. Oh, this sounds so familiar. He was an abused child uh, and whatever. And the courts grant him a youthful offender status and he gets released from prison in March 1992 after only serving 16 months for killing his mother. I mean... You know, yeah, like yeah. 16 months for killing your mom. And it wasn't a situation where this kid was like 
12. He was 17 at the time. But I guess because he was also underage, yeah. he wasn't tried as a full adult yes, either. Yes, he, w- he wasn't yeah. tried as an adult because he was only 17. Um, that one year and really And he was a valedictorian. Him. Yeah. And he did, like, he was on paper... A good kid. A good kid. Yeah. Like, that, that shit. Uh-huh. He uh, was really not. He was kind of a piece of shit. Um, well, he killed his mom. Yeah, so he, yeah. yeah he killed his mom. That. He had some mommy issues. So the police officer for the case, as well as his girlfriend, were both like, there's something wrong with him. He yeah. was showing no remorse for his mom. So it was like, so when he got released after the 16 months on like the youthful, youthful offenders, they were like, he's going to, he's going to offend again. And uh, he does. Yeah. So, but after his release, Things seem to be going pretty well. Uh, He gets a degree at the University of Pennsylvania. Then he moves back to Niagara Falls. And uh, he's just sort of living his life. A couple years have gone by. Um, Then him and his college girlfriend, or a girl that he had been seeing during college, uh, they break up. And William starts heading down a little bit of a slippery slope because we have a trigger. And in April of 1995, he's charged with grabbing a woman's butt as she walked down the street, which I can't, like, first of all, it's 1995, and this woman, like, had him charged for for grabbing his butt. Like, Like, I felt like that, like, watching TV during that time, it just felt like we were supposed to somehow be okay. It's not, but we were supposed to be okay with that. I wrote that down. Yeah. Um... Like, this is 1985 where we were still living in the dream world where men could act like that. Where yeah. men believe that they could act. And they could get away with it. And you always see it, on, it. Yeah, you see it, like, yeah. everywhere. And you're like, you're supposed to be okay with it for some reason. But this girl was like, no, no, no. Good for her. Don't touch me. Yeah. Not having any of that has him arrested. So he's charged with grabbing her butt. And he um, gets, like, a charge of 100 bucks. For, yeah. Like, a little like a slap in the wrist, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Which is how I see them taking care of it even now. Sometimes. Yes. I mean, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, Taylor Swift had, Taylor Swift won hers but if you're re- for a if, dollar. if you're really rich, though. <laughs> that yeah. was just like to prove a point. Yeah. But if you're really rich, there's a different, everything's different for you. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, to all of our listeners, it is definitely not okay uh, so for you to put your hands on anyone. anybody without their consent. No. Um, it's 2018. Unless Don't you're trying it. to save their life. Like, yeah. if they're falling and then you help them, that's okay. Yeah. But for the most part, don't touch anyone. Yeah, you don't get to... No. Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. We're, we learn it in kindergarten. I don't know why as adults we're not still following through with that. It's because, like, we were but... told all through high school, like, oh, boys will be boys, or that's just hormones, or some bullshit that yeah. we're supposed to be okay with it. It's not yeah. okay. No, Stop. It's not. Anyways, go on. Hey, women are, women are guilty, too. Women yeah. can need to that's keep their I... hands to themselves, too. Women... And men. Don't use Every, alcohol everyone. and drug abuse as a reason to be <laughs> like, oh, well, I was drunk, so it's okay. No. 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 Uh, so a month later, in, in May of 1995, William attacks and rapes a young woman. Wow, and escalation. he is charged with a first-degree sexual assault. She was a 17-year-old at the time. Uh, at this point, he's probably thinking, they're not going to let me go. Uh, yeah, not let him go that minor. easily this time. Like I killed my mom. Yeah, now I'm out here raping women. He's going to prison, and they're not going to really give him a light sentence because he's 24, oh. 25 now. Uh, and now like, he has a history yeah, of violence. History. Yeah. So uh, when the cops go looking for him after he fails to show up for his court hearing, they discover that he left behind a suicide note at his aunt's house. Uh, that he was staying at, implying that he was going to throw himself over the Niagara Falls. Oh, my gosh. And the letter reads, Tonight I took the $5 you gave me, bought some alcohol, got drunk, and walked to the falls. To my knowledge, no one has ever survived the American Falls. I don't suspect I will either. And here's my problem with this fucking letter. I think someone did survive (laughs) before him. I mean, it's possible. But the problem is, is that, like... You wrote this letter about, like, stuff that you've gone and done already. Like, you yeah. walked to the falls, but you left. You, you definitely. Left, yeah. You left this note you left behind. This, yeah. <laughs> Did you walk back? I'm very confused. Um, 
So obviously the police didn't believe that he had actually killed himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so the courts sort of proceed. They convict him anyways in absentia or absentia. I don't. Basically, he didn't show up. They convicted him. Yeah. Uh, And they sentenced him to seven years in prison should he ever pop up again. If he hasn't flung himself off the falls. As long as he hasn't flung himself off Mm -hmm. the falls. And unluckily for all of us, um, he didn't. So he somehow makes his way over to Halifax, Mm -hmm. uh, where he lives in a homeless shelter for a little while. uh, And he tries to enroll in grade 12, claiming that he's 17 years old. Oh, my God. That he's from the Yukon, and his dad died in a... Uh, like a car accident, and then his mom died in a fire, and he's an Jesus. orphan. He's really 25. Yeah. Uh, so they obviously don't believe him. Mm-hmm. You, they're like, you look a little old. Yeah. And they're like, no, sorry. Um, so then he eventually moves into a frat house after convincing many people that he's a 19-year-old med student uh, and then he named Ian Thor Green. So basically, he's just sort of like lying to like get wherever he is, but to establish like a much younger uh, persona. Yeah. Because like he's evading the fucking American police. Yeah. Because now he's in Canada. I'm surprised he was able to get into Canada. Well, yeah, that was, they're not really sure how he got into Canada. It's they probably think that much he was easier helped. back then. I would imagine it was a lot Before easier. 9 11, it was probably a lot yeah. easier. Yeah. Um, they think that he was probably helped by a family member. Yeah. Maybe like stowed away in the trunk or something like yeah. that. But like, dang. Hal- Halifax. And plus it was three years later, so he could have like walked. I mean, yeah. who knows? <laughs> um, so he also was able to uh, con a bunch of money out of a local congregation claiming to have immense financial difficulties. So, like, there was a little fund that was sort of set up and, like, so money was being funneled to him through, like, this church. Like, he was, like, conning it up and, like, working it up and it was pretty good. He's and the reason why, like, I have such skepticism with, like, Kickstarters and GoFundMes because yeah. I'm just, like... Are you really, yeah. you know, like, yeah. did, did this really happen to you? Yeah. No, yeah. totally get it. Everyone should be. Yeah. But at the same time, maybe they actually need maybe the help. It is true. Maybe it is. They do need the help. And uh, did you read the article? The homeless guy? No, the oh. article where, like, the person's insurance company told them that they had to go do a Kickstarter campaign for no. $10,000. Like, they were like, well... We need you to do a fundraising effort of at least ten thousand dollars. And it's like you shouldn't like you're you shouldn't have the bag no, for your medical no. care. That's ridiculous. That's the whole the whole purpose of your fucking insurance. Yeah. Is so that you don't have to do that. Exactly. I can't yeah. It was it blew my mind. Okay, so now he's got money and a place to stay. Uh, and so things are looking kind of stable and William starts slipping back into some old habits. Like raping? Yes. Of and, course. And baseball bats. So mm-hmm. in February of 1998, he severely beats a female store clerk named Tamara Donison with a baseball bat and then robs her. She was left in a coma for several days and the doctors had to reconstruct half of her skull. Uh, luckily, she survived. Unfortunately, uh, a man named Danny Mayette, uh, who suffers from schizophrenia, mm-hmm. uh, confessed to the crime and actually went to jail for this attack. Oh, my gosh. Um, so he doesn't even get caught for this until, until, yeah. until much later uh, when, spoiler again, he, he gets caught. Yeah. Uh, William was later arrested uh, for picking up an undercover officer posing as a sex worker. Um, however, because he gave the name of Ian Thor Green and said that he was like 20 or however old yeah. he is now, uh, he wasn't properly identified by the police because for whatever reason, despite the fact that he had been arrested and charged before, his fingerprints didn't, didn't, match. didn't 
either weren't put into the system or like weren't coming up. I wonder if it wasn't put in the system because he was 17. But he also had the rape, the rape afterwards. Charge, yeah. But it, he didn't go to jail for it. No, so. uh, but he was arraigned. Like he didn't. Well, he, this is in Canada, he was right? In court. No, 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 no. Now he's in Canada. This is in the United States. This so before everything was in the New York. Oh. So he murdered his mom and then raped the girl in New York. In New York. And then did everything in Canada. And then came to Canada and beat a woman in the face. I So I think what happened is that they don't really share the yeah, database. That, yeah. Yeah. That also, you know what, that's really true. I never thought about that when I was doing all my thoughts. It's because you don't think about international <laughs> and you're like doing Canada and U.S. They probably share yeah. information. They fucking don't. Well, yes. Um, so uh, he wasn't properly identified by the police. Uh, three years, or sorry, three months later, he beats and robs and sexually assaults a 21-year-old student as she was walking home. God. Uh, he beat her so bad that her contact lenses needed to be surgically removed from oh her eyes. Oh, my God. Uh, the following month, he went out with a fellow student on a date. They had a good time, went back to his place, and as the date was finishing up and she was calling for a taxi, he attacks her, chokes her, drags her back into his room where he then sexually assaults her, uh, some of his college roommates, even though he's not a college student, mm -hmm. uh, end up hearing the screams and the pounding on the walls. Uh, and then so they come in, they try to intervene, uh, and William flees. I mean, I'm glad that they did that. Yeah. You hear a lot of stories of people doing nothing. Yeah. So or they just like good for them. turn around and yeah. walk out. Or they're just like, oh, the shooters are having a good time. Like, yeah. Especially I'm like really, college frats. Yeah. I'm really yeah. glad that they did the right yeah. thing. Um, so they call the cops and when they search his room, um, they find the IDs are of the victims of the two other attacks, as well as a bunch of fake IDs for some of his other personas, mm -hmm. uh, Ian or Leary, Joe Thunder and Daniel Green. Joe Thunder. Joe Thunder. Oh my Loved gosh. it. Uh, and they were like, oh shit, this is bad news bears. Yeah. Uh, this is a really bad guy. We don't know who he is. Uh, things aren't turning out so great. No. Uh, and then after not that long of a search, they find William and they arrest him for the four attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, so now he's sitting in jail, uh, but he's still saying that his name is Ian Green mm -hmm. and that he's 19 years old. Uh, but the cops don't believe him, obviously. And so they're like, well, we don't really know what to do. We don't know, like, his police aren't whatever. So they release, uh, like, a newscast, an international plea uh, to help identify the man. And uh, because he's an aggressive woman hater yeah. and they need, like, he's doing some bad shit. Uh, and the police back in, in New York, they watch this, the TV news broadcast, and they're just like, no fucking way. They clearly didn't jump off Niagara Falls. Yeah. We've got him. They have the guy. And they have the outstanding warrant for him yes. as well. Yeah. Yes. So, however, the Americans don't get to take him because the Canadians are like, fuck you. He's, like, done these crimes here. We're going to take him for these crimes. Uh, we're charging him here. Mm -hmm. uh, but they end up trying three of the cases separately uh, because they ended up dropping one of the sexual assault cases as the Crown didn't feel like they were, it was a strong enough conviction. It didn't specify which one. I couldn't find anything. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the one where they already had the guy in jail. I think it might have been that one because the other but one would have like, had like Why would you leave that guy in jail? Like, uh, that really he bothered he me. to the crime, so yeah. it's like, it's harder. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, they only tried the three cases. They tried them separately. Um, he was also charged with violating the Immigration Act of working illegally in Canada. Uh, there was also another trial for him harassing his ex-girlfriend. Um, and then apparently there were a lot of other women that the police talked to who also claimed to have been attacked by him, uh, ranging from just like a butt grab, like yeah. the one girl to full out sexual assault, but they, but none of them wanted to go through the court processes or anything like that. So they didn't file any of the charges, which is like, that's I can't how it blame goes. them either because like, yeah, like the, most of the time we're just like, well, proof do you have? And it's like, well, it happened. They're like, but you don't have any proof. Yeah, you don't have any proof. Um, why go through the public trial? Yeah. Like, why put yourself through that? He, he, like, 
And victims get dragged he's all gonna get, the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's going to go to jail. Like, yeah. I, if I was in someone else, one of those girls' positions, I probably wouldn't want to add my name to it any, either. Like, so the court finds him guilty on all accounts. He's given a life sentence. However, in 2001, he is declared a dangerous offender and given an indefinite prison sentence. Thank God. Uh, which now means that he can no longer apply for parole, and he's basically there forever. forever. Thank God. Uh, in 2001, he legally changed his name to Ethan Simon Templar McLeod uh, because Simon Templar was the name of a character on his favorite TV show, The Saint. And that, that's it. That's it for this... Uh, crazy person who probably had his life kind of together but then uh, just i think just like it released had, something yeah. in him as soon as he beat his mom to death yeah. i think it released like this feeling of like oh my god i really enjoy this yes and then he kind of just that hated women yeah after that and who fucking knows what kind of crazy shit that mom is spewing who knows? For the first 18 years because i'm pretty sure like he was probably life. really nice to his first girlfriend yeah so but anyway, so I guess we're reversing roles because you did a recent yeah. murder, and I'm yeah. going to 1500s, Ooh, and it's not even a murder. So it's not even a murder. I know it's just gonna be a weird thing. <laughs> that I'm, doing uh, right now. I'm, you know what? That's fine because I'm totally down for weird antique deaths. Yeah, it's just like it was a weird one, and on top of that, like. I just I was doing research on something else and I got depressed and I didn't want to do it anymore. I won't lie, I've had this idea where I wanted to go through because there was like this list that I found of like people that died in weird ways yeah. and a lot of it's like they laughed themselves to death. Yeah, and I'm just like, what do you think really happened? Like, what do you think really happened when they shat their fucking like intestines all over the ground? Well, like, this was on that list, so you've probably seen it. Oh. This is the dancing plague of 1518. <gasps> <laughs> yes. so, I did. I didn't really research any. There much wasn't into it, but a like, lot. so it turns out there is an actual. This is like me spreading out this information after like forging through like ten articles I think I read, I think and I read like YouTube videos that are three minutes long. So this is uh, we'll see how long this is. No, I'm so excited. This is great. On July fourteenth, fifteen eighteen, in the town of Strasbourg, a lace in the Holy Roman Empire, which is now France. Yeah. Frau Truffo stepped out on the streets and started to dance. And I just Do realized that that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> Despite her husband's pleads, um, Frau couldn't seem to stop dancing. And she didn't really seem to be enjoying herself. Like, she looked like she was in pain the whole time. Yeah. She would eventually collapse from exhaustion. Yeah. After resting, she got right back up and started dancing in the streets again. I mean, just think, of, like... Just think about having to like constantly move, yeah. move and dance. I bet you this sounds really annoying on like the microphone. <laughs> like moving back and forth. Like, oh, this is really yeah. good. Yeah. You're going to end this listeners. music. <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I don't know. It's probably pleasing to me. I like that kind of stuff. But That's true. Well, maybe Sorry, the listeners will like it. Yeah. Um, after about four days, authorities intervened and sent her 30 miles away to Severn because they were hoping that the shrine of Vitus would cure her. And St. Vitus is a patron saint of actors, comedians, dancers, and epileptics. Um, there had been a few dancing plagues in the past, and whenever they happened, people would believe it was because they angered St. Vitus and he was punishing you. Interesting that epilepsy is in there. Because, like, I, th I think, like, back then they saw, like, epileptics as dancing, you know, like, when you yeah. have a seizure or something. But so, it's just, like... It's it's interesting that it's in there. It doesn't match the other parts. Yeah, so actors, <laughs> comedians, yeah. and dancers, and epileptics. Yeah. Just, it's like an add-on in the yeah. end. Like, I don't think epilepsy is a real disease. It's basically what it sounds like, right? Yeah, well, they probably didn't know what it was at the time yeah. either. But, I mean, who knows? Continue. The Dancing Plague of 1518 wasn't the first one, but it was the most well-documented dancing plague. 
So within a week, 34 people would join her in the streets, dancing well past point of injury. What kind of, like, neurological... Like, this is clearly, like, they've eaten a mushroom. They actually go through, like, all the things that could potentially be okay. it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, alarmed by what was going on, city authorities went to civic and religious leaders for advice. Mm-hmm. And they gave the worst advice. Of course they did. They suggested that maybe more dancing could be the solution. Uh, as it was possible, these people were just had to get the dancing out of their system. I mean, it's it's the 1500s. Yeah. Sure. I, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, we'll just, let's add some more dancing to cure the dancing. Mm-hmm. Guild halls, musicians, and professional dancers were hired to help those dancing to continue to dance. To, like, teach them how to dance? No, just so, like, so they could keep dancing, hoping that, like, all the music will be like, maybe you could dance it out faster if we have all this stuff for you to help you dance longer. A wooden stage was constructed as well. This was because a guild of physicians at the time declared a dancing to be a natural disease which comes from overheated blood. What? (laughs) Oh, my God. And you forget how much science has evolved in 500 years. How do you, what test was he running to like know, like, they, it's they over. touch your skin and they're like, you're warm, your blood's warm, you feel a little hot, you're overheating your blood. I think that's actually the well, thought process behind it. Yeah, because I'm jumping around and I'm yeah. dancing. And that's how like, your blood gets overheated. Oh my gosh. Okay. Past victims of similar uncontrollable dancing was treated with, they must dance themselves free of it. So past people were told the same thing. Yeah, did they die or did they cure themselves? They didn't say because the other ones weren't as documented, yeah. but I think this one, yeah. So within a month, there was about 400 dancers on the streets. Oh, okay, yes. Mostly I female. Yeah. It would seem as though the music and exposure just exasperated the situation. <laughs> and it's one of those things where, like, how many people do you think were just out there, like, just dancing because it was something to, to do? do? Yeah, like, I mean, there's the nothing 1500s. else to do. Like, this could have just been a really big flash mob. I mean... <laughs> well, it was reported that for a period of time, around 15 people were dying a day. Wow. Many died from heart attacks, strokes, or exhaustion. Because they can't. were just going... And it's the middle of summer, too. It's in July. I'm feeling like it has, like if this was nowadays, I'd be like, oh, they fucking threw some, they're doing another, like, what was that drug they were doing? Oh, LSD? Yeah. The government was like shooting into people. I think it's LSD. Yeah. yeah. What was that called though? That program? Um, oh my God. I want to say Alpha something, but it's no, not that. No, it's, um, oh my God, I'm going to like kick myself. Oh, Nick's not MK even. Ultra. That's it. That's what MK it was. Ultra. Yeah. So the council ordered the stages to be taken down as they no longer wanted people to have to see it. Because they thought the more people saw it, the more people might come yeah. out and dance. Uh, or maybe it's like now it's an airborne fucking infectious disease. Yeah, and they don't know what's and going on. Like now they're just spreading like 400 people. It went from one to 400 really yeah. quickly. In a month? That's crazy. Yeah. So those who were deemed to be the worst afflicted by the council will, were bundled into wagons and taken on a three-day journey to the St. Vitus Shrine where Frau had been cured. So she doesn't die. She actually oh, Frau does was get cured, cured and- by the shrine, even though I'm pretty sure it's just like getting away and getting some rest maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking there's like some weird biochemical... Like, they released some spore. There was two major ones that I wrote down, but um, the American medical historian John Waller would state that a marathon, run- a marathon runner would not have lasted the intense workout these people were doing. So there was, like, a lot of cardio. Mm-hmm. And Which is why they 15 of them were dying every yeah. day. John believed that this was a form of mass psychogenic disorder. Yes. That's what it was. A similar outbreak took place under circumstances of extreme stress and general take for based on local fear. So they just think it was like a like one person had a psychotic break and then it sort of just like other people just started getting like yeah. these little Because psych- apparently the previous year in 1517. I feel like it was something in the water. Well, like the previous year in 1517 was a really bad year for Strasbourg. Um, there was like new diseases being introduced, like smallpox mm-hmm. and syphilis, harvest failure, and spiking wheat prices, which caused just widespread misery in general. Yeah, 
If it happened the year prior, I'm just saying if they cut up some weird fucking mushroom and then they fed it to all their people and then the next year they go and they cut up the mushroom again and feed it to their people. Well, like, other investigators and historians point, pointed the blame on bread made from rye flour contaminated with a fungal disease, ergo, there it is. which is known to produce convulsions. Yes. But... Um, I, the thing I think is, it was like culturally, mold. the whole stress thing does still happen to this day. I, so that's another thing. So every European dancing plague between 1374 and 1518 occurred near Strasbourg in the western edge of the Roman Empire. So it could be the fungus because yeah. of the fact that like it's, it's in very, the same area. Yeah. Th- like, that sounds like a fungus that was like, yeah, that sounds like a mold. Uh, now it keeps growing. That yeah. keeps growing. That's giving some psychedelic effects and like. Be- and you can't stop it. Yeah, and I that's, think like with the three day journey to the shrine kind of like cleanses yeah, your body because you, you're not eating that shit anymore. Yeah, because then- the spores are probably like the mushrooms are probably like releasing. Like, I mean, it depends. It depends on the kind of mold, but yeah. like if it's releasing something into the air and you're just like I think it's breathing the, it's that around. It. It's eating it. Oh, okay. And then it was in the flour. And yeah. obviously back then, everyone kind of just ate the same thing. Yeah, you get away, you you get away from you the can. food. You get away from the environment. The Dancing um, Plague of 1518 was the air. last of its kind in Europe. Further outbreaks declined along with the belief system that sustained them because there was a belief of like you had to dance it out. And I well, think as soon as like people would stop doing that shit, you just do it. Sort of feel like on some level, I will agree that on some level it's probably a social psychosomatic type thing where like they would see someone who's just dancing and then they went and like started dancing as well. well. Actually, the last couple of points is about that. Okay. The okay. dancing mania <laughs> underscored the power of cultural context to shape the way in which psychological suffering is expressed. Mm-hmm. People can be very suggestible, as you know. Yes. And at the time, the people had a very strong conviction that St. Vitus was, is being vengeful and punishing them. So I yes. think that when they got through this very miserable time, they just you know, blames yeah, St. The, Vitus. And then so they start thinking like, oh, we're going to start, when someone's going to start dancing, you see someone dancing, they're like, we're all going to start being punished. And then that's it. Yeah. Today, many cultures around the world will enter a trance deliberately during ceremonies or involuntarily during periods of extreme stress, which I have seen because I'm Catholic and they have like those big mass gatherings where you, I like, I forgot what it's called now, but um, you have like these big mass gatherings and people like start feeding tongues and shit. Okay, and, you know what? Yeah. I have seen that. I grew up with that too. Uh, it was, and it wasn't a big gathering. It would, I think we it's would just be, See, it would just be we would be at church, yeah, and we'd be like singing our hymns or the pre- pastor or whatever would be up there doing a speech, and then someone in the crowd um, would like. For whatever reason, when it was at my, the church that I went when I was a kid that my grandparents always went to, mm-hmm. like our family's church, it was always the same woman that I always did yeah. it. And but the thing they is- always told me like, oh, Jesus speaks to them. But then I went to a different church mm-hmm. and it happened to like four or five different people Some at Some people that one. also just follow along because they want to feel like they're also special too. Yeah. And so who knows? But it says once en- entranced in the state, um, their serves- perception of pain and exhaustion is marginalized, which explains why people just kept dancing to their deaths. Yeah, even it makes though sense. It doesn't, yeah, it's like usually you don't do something until you die purposely to yourself, but if you don't feel that pain, hmm. then you just... Because it's all depending on the brain, right? Yeah. So the, that sounds like a fucking parasite, like yeah. a dancing parasite, and thank God that mushroom's gone. But, <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe it's still around in, like, one of those other tribes that we don't contact or talk about or whatever or different yeah but i mean how many tribes are in europe or france that we don't know about i thought it was weird that it was all in one area so it's kind of crazy like i wonder how if it was a fungal disease if Mm -hmm. like how it left they wiped out the mushrooms yeah but i mean i don't think they even knew back then what it was okay but if they think that it was like a mold on the grain then they probably cleared out all that grain but they couldn't because they were already in like um they're they're like their grain crop had already failed so maybe when it failed if like yeah. all of it failed and then when the new one grew it was yeah because it was probably mold growing on like their 
like that Flower they had already stuff. already harvested it yeah. and they were like they were storing it and yeah. the mold grew on that and so when they that all, all depleted yeah. and it was like gone gone and like the next year it was probably a situation where they probably hadn't got rid of it at no, all because, because they, they were they're conserving it yeah. because yeah and then they added another batch of whatever and so it spreads again or like grows a little bit more because it's got more shit to grow on and then you have another fucking plague of shit and i kind of want to imagine that it was psychosomatic i'm sure some of it probably was i don't think i I want i want to believe it just because it just that's what i want i don't know why i just want to I want to believe that people ate a mushroom and, and, it, cre- and like yeah. it created some parasite in their brain. Like that is some weird neurological. Yeah. That's crazy. But that's my old but short story because I took from your book and yes. decided to go old this time. Well, I'm glad I don't have to do that one now because yeah, I thought I about doing it one day. It well, was it gonna was going to be on my, what do you think really killed them? Very small. <laughs> it was very, very small. And I, I've definitely been like, it was, it's all in their heads. I don't think it's all in their heads because of what I you said, to. because yeah, you know. said like you don't normally do you, a human can't kill them. Like I shouldn't say they can't kill themselves on purpose, but like they usually don't. Not like even time even like when you're that. trying to drown yourself, yeah. you'll, you still have the instinct to to stop, stop drowning. Yeah. Um, so for you to have gotten to that state where you're dancing to death, yeah. like that's something you that can't you just stop. stop and that's then a neurological yeah. like there's something going on in your brain um that's making you so that you can't stop but if it was a situation where it was like 400 people went out there but there were a couple that were leaving at night i'd be like they're faking it yeah but if they were literally dancing for until 40 they died. yeah like 48 72 hours until they died no not that's not psych- that's not psychosomatic I, I shouldn't say it's not maybe it is a little but it. A psychosomatic, in my opinion, would only go so far I without think, it being like a chemical thing. I think like the reason why I believe them more was because like they did quote like a, a medical historian mm-hmm. who said that it does happen, and that's the only reason I. Would, and then they quoted him a little bit more in all it the probably, other articles. They, it probably does happen, but it is all speculation because yeah. it's obviously five hundred years ago, yeah. so you can't ask people who have been there like. And if that's the last on, reported guys. one, yeah, I mean, then it's just like, yeah. It's all personal opinion. (laughs) But thanks for joining us this week, guys. And I hope you liked our stories. Please email us if you have any weird stories at peoplekeepdying at gmail.com. And you can find us on most social media at peoplekeepdying. Uh, We're on Facebook, Twitter. And Instagram. uh, YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, we are on YouTube, guys, if you do want to just like Play it in the background. Play it on the yeah. background in YouTube. But we're on I mean, Spotify now, too. But I guess if you're on Spotify listening to this, then you, already you would know already that. know that. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next week. And hopefully you're not dead by the